Minister of State for National Security Senator Keith Bell says illegal firearms remain the weapon of choice for criminals. But he says the government is committed to the fight. In his contribution to the budget debate, he spoke to the numbers of illegal weapons seized. In addition to having charged some 34 persons for homicide, murder, they would have seized some 200 illegal firearms off the street. These include some very high-powered weapons. Madam President, I wanted to bring some today for you all to see. But I said, I just hold off. Not right, not yet, but it, it's coming. You got to see these things that's coming into this country. They have seized more than 3,000 rounds of illegal ammunition. 3,000. Madam President, I'm talking about armor-piercing bullets. They call them cop killers. These are the type of ammunition and weapons. Cop killer bullets on our streets. And the officers are there going day and night. While we are sleeping, they are out there protecting us. Madam President, with respect to the interception and seizure of illegal weapons, the force has invigorated teams of detectives at the Firearms Tracing and Investigative Unit who direct operations against firearms traffickers and persons suspected of being in possession of illegal firearms and ammunition. The work is supported by our flying squad. The confiscated assets fund of the government is growing. The increase is reportedly due directly to the excellent work of police in, its, in their seizure efforts of illegal goods. Senator Bell, in his contribution to the budget debate, also spoke to that issue. More than $1 million in cash was seized in operations from drug traffickers. $1 million, Madam President, cash. You know, Madam President, of course, that money we anticipate will go to the confiscated asset funds account. This government hope, anticipate, that we would be able to replenish that account and we will not operate it as a slush fund as the previous administration. Now, Senator Bell also pointed out that when the Progressive Liberal Party government lost the election in 2007, it left $30 million in the confiscated assets fund. He questioned where the money went, to which opposition Senate leader, the Honorable Carl Baffle, gave this response. When we took office, Madam President, there was a mere $100,000. So, Madam President... Where did the money go? That's what we're trying to find. We're point still of doing our analysis. Point of order. Point of order. <laughs> the member is, is well aware that the confiscated asset fund is a shared fund, as between the Bahamas government and our partners. And he's also aware that every removal of funds in terms of Bahamian funds within that confiscated asset funds was used by the former government directly and solely for the purposes of equipping the Royal Bahamas Police or Defense Forces, period. So to ask a disingenuous question like that, Madam President, particularly when the Honorable Senator, as Deputy Minister of National Security or Minister of State in the ministry, whatever, however you wish to categorize it, he has access to that information. <coughs> and for him to stand and ask a question like that, without also supplying the details, which are in possession of the ministry, is totally untoward and unbecoming of someone in his high office. Senator Kwesi Thompson expressed his disappointment over the government's 2014-2015 budget. He says the government is introducing a fiscal budget which will result in one of the most, which is within rather, one of the most difficult years for Bahamians in this country's history. Senator Thompson was extremely critical of its contents, singling out the proposed introduction of value-added tax. Bahamians must begin to prepare themselves for the considerable pain and suffering this government seems insistent on inflicting on the poor and the middle class. It has been projected that come January 2015, there will be a considerable rise in the cost of living. Bahamians must get ready to pay more for food, clothing, and services. That paycheck will simply not buy as many items as it did before. And Bahamians must become accustomed to living with less 
and keeping less in their pockets. Life will be more difficult. Things will be more expensive. Thanks to this caring and believe in Bahamian government.